I can tell you're a rowdy bunch today. <laughs> Praise the Lord. All right, I got, I got it. <laughs> Yesterday we squared the building. Hopefully we'll start digging this week. Our future's in front of us, amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. I'll be glad to be in a building instead of standing in the sun, but the Lord is worth it all. Praise the Lord. So let's, uh, let's take communion together right now. We're going to do the body first. Here's your body. I think about the body of Jesus and what he went through for us as his body was broken, humiliated, suffering, crucified, and he did it for each one of us in this parking lot this morning. As we take communion, I'm asking for healing for one of our members, Robin Storm, was diagnosed with breast cancer. And I want to pray this morning through the body of Christ that healing will come to her, that we'll stand with her, that we'll love her through this. And may God bring healing to her Amen. and to all of us. And as we take communion, we do it in remembrance of him. Holy Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus and we ask this morning that you would bring healing to Robin, to her family, to anyone else that's going through some ailment, physically or mentally. We want to praise you this morning and thank you for being so good to us. And then your broken body went to the cross and you were crucified. And as we take communion this morning, we don't do it in remembrance of us. We do it in remembrance of you and we praise you and honor you this morning. In the name of Jesus, amen. The Bible says, without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sins. All the way back to Genesis all the way through up to the cross. And I think about the blood of Jesus and what it means as I was walking the property praying yesterday, asking the Lord to just cover us, cover us with his blood. And, and as his blood was shed, he was thinking about each one of us. See, the body was for healing, the blood was for salvation. And we take this blood and communion in remembrance of him. Thank you again, Father, for the blood. Thank you for loving us. Thank you, Father, for giving us your son, Yeshua. And Jesus, we take communion this morning in remembrance of you and what you've done for us. And we love you this morning. We honor you. We turn this service over to you. And we ask it to be a mighty move of God this morning. And we thank you in your wonderful name. Amen. 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 I'm going to ask Sandy if she'll come up. She wants to share a word with the ladies this morning. Morning, everyone. I just want to share a little something really quickly with um, all the ladies of Christ out there in the audience. I got a t-shirt this week. I ordered it about two months ago and it finally came. I've been waiting and waiting and waiting. Anyways, you won't be able to see it, so I'm going to read it to you. And it said, the devil whispered in my ear, you're not strong enough to withstand the storm. Today I whispered in the devil's ear, I am a child of God, a woman of faith, a warrior for Christ. I am the storm. I love it. 
That's good. <laughs> Amen. Do we have some women's of storm in the in the house today? I've told people in our community, don't worry about our men, worry about our ladies, amen? Did he make something beautiful of our lives? Won't be long, he'll be here. I said it won't be long, he'll be here. Robin, we just want you to know that we're standing with you all the way. That I know the Lord is going to use this to bring himself glory. Praise the Lord. I want to welcome our guests today, those that are visiting. May you be encouraged. I'm really excited about our future, where we're going. We worked on the property yesterday, getting the building squared up and getting it lined up to build the church. And I want to thank all of you for giving so much, how the Lord has used you to give to the church. I want to thank the financial team for being responsible with the money, using it wisely, sowing into the kingdom, and I'm excited about the new church coming quickly. Today I want to talk to you about another woman. For the last three weeks I've been talking about women. We talked about Adam and Eve. Three weeks ago and last week we talked about the woman caught in adultery and I want to talk to you about another woman today because there's so much truth in this story that I think we'll get a lot out of it. I read a story that Shar gave me that I thought was appropriate and it said a four-year-old child whose next door neighbor was an elderly gentleman who had recently lost his wife. Upon seeing the man cry, the little boy went into the old gentleman's yard, climbed onto his lap, and just sat there. When his mother asked him what he had said to the neighbor, the little boy just said nothing. I helped him cry. I thought, how beautiful is that picture of what the body of Christ looks like? But I want to tell you this morning, if you really knew about Pharaoh, if you really knew who it was, you would be shocked. How did Moses handle a difficult person like Pharaoh? Most people don't know this until you really dig it out, but Pharaoh was a ruthless, and I mean ruthless, wicked person like we've never seen. Facing Pharaoh was like facing Hitler, or facing Pol Pot, or Stalin. Pharaoh was not only brutal, he treated Israel like animals. They were murdered, and he was totally demonic. You don't really see Pharaoh in this light until you really dig this story out and get underneath the scriptures. One of the great attributes of the scriptures is to go under, underneath them and find out the history the context, the covenant, what was really going on in the story. And any time uh, people are controlled by others, it's going to get out of hand. Today we have a different type of control. The control today is the control of religion. Religion is main goal is to control others. Religion is brutal and ruthless also, but really doesn't understand how ruthless and brutal it is. And really, religion is a form of slavery or bondage. In fact, the only people that Jesus ever came against was those that were religious. 
See closer walk in God's eyes. Everybody is created equal. Everybody is equal in his eyes. There is no color. It doesn't really matter what color, what race that we are, man or woman. We were all created equal in God's eyes. We we're all created equal in God's image. But how do you handle people that are difficult, people that are stubborn, people that are ignorant, people that are obstinate or even toxic? How do you handle those type of people. Well, anytime we're going to handle a situation, we really need to look to Jesus to find out how he handled it and then learn from him how he dealt with people. And when I get into this story, it won't take long, when I get into the story, we're going to see something amazing on how Jesus handled people. See, we're not here this morning just to feel good. We're here to learn about life, to learn about Jesus, to lift up the cross, to learn about how to handle situations. So many people are in bondage and don't even know it. It's the bondage of the religious spirit. Many times in our life, we're going to have to take a stand. And in doing that, many people are going to misunderstand you. See, misunderstanding is deadly. Misunderstanding has caused so much pain. There's so much sin and so much judgment. But this is a story about two people. It's a story about being misunderstood. It's a story of a religious spirit and what it looks like. It's a story of how to handle people, how to handle situations. Because if you're breathing this morning, you're going to have to learn how to handle certain people and certain situations. No, they may not be in front of you now, but they will be. They will be. This is a story of how to handle life. These two people. The difference between these two people is stunning, absolutely stunning. One is looked up to, one is looked down on. One is a church leader, she is a street walker. He makes a living keeping the rules, she makes a living breaking the rules. The difference between these two people is stunning. He's hosting a party and she's crashing the party. You put them side by side, these two people, everyone will pick him, not her. You know, she's a streetwalker, she's a bad girl. He is a student of theology, he's a man of the cloth. Everyone would pick him except one person, and that one person's name is Jesus. He's the one that wouldn't have picked the man of the cloth, the man of religion. Jesus is the one that picked her. And I love Jesus for this. And Jesus tells this man why. He tells him why. And Jesus wants to give him a chance also. Jesus gave him grace, but religion will always block grace from coming into your life and from us releasing grace. Religion will always be in the way. See, religion controls us and, and dominates our walk. And, and religion is so self-righteous and so nasty that Jesus came against this religious spirit because this religious spirit has no place in Christianity. But the man doesn't want to hear it. His focus is not Jesus. His focus is how did this woman even get in the party? How did she even get there? She's not welcome. 
you know, when religion is confronted by, you know, those type of people, those type of people that aren't welcome, those type of people that don't fit in, those type of people that the church looks down on, that pushes away, that doesn't want really anything to do with them, you know, they're dirty. They don't belong. And Jesus is about to rock their world and our world this morning. She's dirty. She doesn't measure up. She's, uh, you know, he's, uh, you know, she's, uh, you know, streetwalker. He's a religious man, a man of the cloth a leader in his community. He's a Pharisee. And just like last week's message, this is another setup for Jesus. It's a bad idea to mess with Jesus. It's a really, really bad idea. It's a bad idea. See, the dinner they're having is a black tie event. A black tie event it's a black tie event. The dinner is a formal affair. Upper crust, the well-to-do, the who's who of society. How did this riffraff get in there? It's a formal affair. The who's who of society is at this party. I want to pause the service for a minute. And I want you to think about this story because Simon is thinking about how she got in here, how she made it in here. And I want to pause the service. I got one, Rick. Oh. Uh, for a special announcement. Be careful, be very careful when you think thoughts that you don't want Jesus to hear. Because Jesus hears everything let's go back to the message because Jesus shares his thoughts with us his thoughts are open it's called the book of life the holy Bible so Jesus tells these words to the man and I want to know if you've ever heard this words he goes Simon I have something to say to you and I want to know if you've ever heard those words from Jesus you know do you know what I'm talking about? When we want to judge somebody else, when, when we point out other people's sins and we go, hey, Jesus, we want to talk to you about them. And Jesus goes, well, I've really got something to say to you. No, 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 Jesus, I want to talk about them. No, let's have a conversation about you. So he says, I have something to say. Go to Luke chapter 7. If you will, let's look at the story together. God always gives me a breeze up here, amen? Is this hot? All you all there? Luke chapter 7. We'll go to verse 36. Chapter 7, verse 36 says of Luke, Then one of the Pharisees asked him to eat with him. And he went down to the Pharisee's house and sat down to eat. And behold, a woman in the city who was a sinner, when she knew that Jesus sat at the table in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster flask of fragrant oil and stood at his feet behind him weeping. And she began to wash his feet with her tears and wipe them with her hair of her head. And she kissed his feet and anointed them with the fragrant oil. And when the Pharisee who had invited him saw this, he spoke to himself saying, This man, this man, if he were a prophet, would know who and what manner of woman this is who is touching him, for she's a sinner. And Jesus answered and said to him, Simon, I have something to say to you. I have something to say to you. So he said, Teacher, say it. 
So Jesus said there was a certain creditor who had two debtors. One owed him 500 denarii and the other 50. And when they had nothing with which to repay, he freely forgave them both. Tell me therefore which of them will love him more. And Simon answered and said, I suppose, I suppose the one whom he forgave more. And he said, you have rightly judged. Verse 44. Then he turned to the woman and said to her, Simon, do you see this woman? I entered your house. You gave me no water for my feet, but she has washed my feet with her tears and wiped them with the hair of her head. You gave me no kiss, but this woman, she has not ceased to kiss my feet since the time I came in. You did not anoint my head with oil, but this woman has anointed my feet with fragrant oil. Therefore I say to you, her sins, which are many, are forgiven, for she loved much. But to whom little is forgiven, the same loves little. Then he said to her, Your sins are forgiven. And those who sat at the table with him began to say to themselves, Who is this who even forgives sins? Then he said to the woman, Your faith has saved you. Go in peace. What a beautiful story of a religious spirit and a streetwalker. And what the difference is between these two and how Jesus sees this story, what it means to him. And I want to tell you a story. It's a story of what happened in San Francisco. It's a story of a, an antique shop. And in this antique shop, it was cluttered with junk. But a man came in and noticed something on the floor. There was an ancient Chinese saucer. And as he looked closer, he turned. It turned out that the priceless piece of China was from the Ming Dynasty. It was worth millions of dollars. And it was on the floor filled with milk for the cat. So this man's hands start sweating. And he thinks this will be an opportunity of a lifetime. The guy probably doesn't even know what this saucer's worth. So he tells the store and he goes, how much for the cat? The store owner says, oh, she's not for sale. She keeps the store free of mice. So the, the man that comes in the store goes, I must have the cat. Tell you what, I'll give you $100 for her. So the owner starts laughing. She isn't worth that much. But if you want her that badly, she's yours. So the man gives the store owner $100. So then the man says to the store, store owner, well, I need something to feed her with. I will give you another $10 for that saucer that she drinks her milk from. So the store owner looks at the man and says, oh, I, I could never do that. The saucer's worth millions of dollars. Millions of dollars. It's actually a saucer that's priceless from the Ming Dynasty. Then he says these priceless words. Since I've had that saucer, I've sold 17 cats. <laughs> And I'm thinking this morning about what are you worth? What is your value this morning? See, this is a story about a woman in a society that didn't want her. See, she wasn't welcome anymore. She wasn't welcome. She had no value. She had no value. Jesus is invited to Simon's house as an honored guest. There was a protocol in those days when an honored guest was called into a party. There's certain things that apply. To start with, Jesus should have received a kiss. It wasn't for affection. It was for honor. The, see, the kiss took on certain forms in those days. It depended on the status of who was invited. It was a sign of peace. It was a sign that the, the, the past was dead. 
It was a sign of rebirth. It was a sign of respect. There was no kiss. Remember in the Garden of Gethsemane when, when Judas kissed Jesus. Judas actually kissed Jesus on the hand. And that was a sign then of a disciple to disciple. And Jesus goes, hey, Judas, you, you kiss me while you betray me. But this is a different kind of a story, an interesting story. This would be like you going over to my house, and I invite you for dinner. And you come over to my house, and I'm sitting watching TV. I don't look you in the eye. You just come over, and you come in. I don't get up to greet you, nothing. And, and I look at you and say, hey, go in, and make, go in and get yourself a sandwich and make me one too while you're at it. It was so rude that it's a stunning story. In those days, they would give their guest olive oil, and it was mixed with frankincense. And the reason why is because it was so hot and sweaty. They would give the, 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 the guest oil, and they would anoint him with this fragrance. They also washed their feet of walking in the dust. The oil was refreshing, the water was refreshing. But Jesus is treated like garbage. He receives nothing. And everybody at that party knows that the protocol wasn't fo followed. Everybody there knows Jesus is treated like garbage. You could hear the whispers. The honored guest gets nothing. I started thinking about this story and thinking about what is it like to meet Jesus and have nothing to give him. Simon had nothing to give God, nothing to give the Son of God. Can you imagine meeting our Savior and having nothing to give Him, to stand before Him with empty hands after He's given us so much? There's no greeting, no water, no kiss, no oil. This is hostility towards God. It's a deliberate snub, and everybody knows it. It's really a slap in Jesus' face. You know how uncomfortable that room was? You understand how uncomfortable? But I want to tell you something, how thick the tension was. Simon's words without words were, you're not welcome. You're not welcome, Jesus. Except the woman of the night, she's willing to risk it all. And I want to ask you this, this morning, close to walk, I want to ask you a question. How much are you willing to risk? How much? Because until we get desperate, we're never willing to risk anything until we get to a place of desperation. How much will it take for us to risk everything we have for somebody else? It's a daunting question. It's a daunting thought to think in this courtyard where they were, they had a wall that was waist high. And what happened is they would all sit outside in this courtyard and, and talk about events. They invite Jesus and there's people from everywhere looking over this wall. She jumped over the wall, scaled the wall, in front of all those people to get to Jesus. I've noticed how desperate I'm becoming. Cheryl and I were talking about it this morning, how God has got my attention now. And as we get closer to the Lord's return, as our world spins out of control, how desperate do you want to be desperate enough to give everything to him desperate enough to live a life sanctified to him how desperate see her love is extravagant she knows what Simon doesn't God's love how did she find out we don't know maybe she was in the crowd listening to Jesus teach sometime, or maybe she heard something. 
But I want to tell you, she comes guilty. She has regret. She comes in repentance before God. She makes a love. She makes love for a living, but doesn't find any until she meets Jesus. And this story is about Jesus drenching her in the gospel of grace. It is a phenomenal story. See, the party is really, Jesus was invited because it's a party. It's a thing to set him up, just like last week, to set Jesus up. But she goes over this wall, and there's no water to wash his feet. So she starts crying on his feet. When you look at the original language of this story, she rained tears, rained tears, rained tears down on Jesus' feet. In fact, that room when she was at, the floor would have been soaked with her tears. She rained tears down. She has no oil. So she takes out her alabaster oil. And I want to tell you this morning something about this oil. I want to tell you the price of this alabaster oil, what it was worth in U.S. dollars. That alabaster oil that she put on Jesus' feet was worth 54,000 U.S. dollars, 509 U.S. dollars. 54,000 five hundred and nine dollars when you think about a closer walk she gave everything to Jesus come on you see my point don't you when you get to a place of desperation you'll give Jesus at all but until we get to the place of desperation it's meted out to him but when you get to a place well, you've got to get to Jesus' feet. You've got to be near him. He's everything in your life. You and I will give him everything that we have. $54,000. But not only is she giving Jesus all she has, she's really giving Jesus her old life. Where did she get a $54,509 alabaster of oil? Probably from one of her customers. We don't know. We don't really know. I thought about her putting that alabaster on Jesus' feet. I wonder, if one, I wonder if her customers were in the crowd when she jumped the wall. Maybe even Simon was with her. And I want to tell you right now, this alabaster of oil and this fragrance would have filled that whole area up with the fragrance. I want you to think about it. It was a testimony. It was a testimony against their religion, against their snubbing, against their self-righteousness, against their judgment, against their condemnation, against their guilt, against their shame. She anointed Jesus' feet as a memorial and gave him all she had. And when you're desperate enough, we will give Jesus everything in our life. She's called a sinner. The woman's called a sinner. In the Greek language, it's hamatolos, and it means this. She's immoral and has a very bad reputation. See, women weren't called sinners in the Bible. Very few women were called sinners in the Bible. In fact, the Bible consists of between 5.5 and 8% of women in the Bible, and only 93 women ever spoke in the Bible. Did you notice this story? She never said a word. See, when you're desperate enough, we don't need to be yapping and talking. We just need to go to the feet of Jesus and rest there. Kind of like Mary and Martha. Mary honored Jesus by going to his feet and sitting at his feet and letting Jesus love her. See, when we get to the feet of Jesus and let him love us, the desperation takes on a different form. She's not like other women because the Pharisees wouldn't have been there. But you know... And I know that this woman, whoever she was, 
Not only does she have a bad reputation, but everybody shakes their head in disgust at her. Everybody whispers at her. You know, she, she, you know, she. The self-righteousness is stunning. And I'll tell you something else. Not one time did Jesus ever bring up her sin. Not once. Not one time did Jesus embarrass her. Not one time did Jesus bring up her sin. Not one time did Jesus condemn her. See, all she's known for is her body. All she's known for is doors open at night in a secret. You know, doors of shame, doors of guilt, doors of condemnation from people who think they're holier than thou. You know, we've come across them. The self-righteousness is stunning. And I'll tell you right now, as long as I'm pastor of this church, we will never, ever become a self-righteous church where people aren't welcome. We will welcome everybody into the body of Christ. She's desperate, but she doesn't belong there. But I want to tell you, nothing will stop her. Nothing will stop her. And I love people like this, that nothing will stop them from getting to Jesus, to getting to his feet, to getting to him. Nothing will stop her. But she doesn't belong there. See, desperate people got to get to Jesus. Simon could have been forgiven, but he doesn't ask. He doesn't believe he needs to be forgiven. He's desperate too, but he doesn't even know it. How many people in the body of Christ are desperate and don't even know? How desperate they are as they're clouded in religion and clouded in self-righteousness and clouded in judgment. They don't even know. They don't even know that they're desperate. I was thinking about this as I preached this message last night. How do you get something you haven't received? How do you give love to her if you haven't received the love? How do you give out of what you haven't received? Could it be closer walk? that the reason the church has produced stone throwers is because we haven't really received God's love in the way God wants us to receive it. See, the woman climbs over the wall. She gets to Jesus' feet. She doesn't care what anybody thinks. I love that. Somehow she knew God's love and received God's love. And Jesus on a, is on a mission. And by the way, close walk, Jesus knows she's there. I love this. Jesus knows everything. He knows every thought. He knows every action. He knows the heart. Something happened to me a couple of months ago. This is not about me, but I want to tell you this testimony. When I read that scripture in 2 Chronicles, it says this. God is looking on the earth for a heart that is committed to him. And a heart that is committed to him, he promises us he will strengthen that heart. I want to tell you this morning, close the walk, that's what Jesus is looking at, the heart. That's where he's focused. That's where life is in the heart of the matter. And when we bring our heart to Jesus... I told the prayer group Friday night that, that, that what I really want is to, that God to work in my heart because the heart is desperately wicked above measure who can know it. And the closer I get to Jesus, the more I, how much I see my heart is bad. See, that's desperation. When you come to Jesus honestly and you say whatever it is in your life, for me, it's Jesus changed my heart. See, I turned off the TV, so I didn't get, I'm not getting distracted by that because I want Jesus to do something in my heart. And even though no one stands with her, Jesus does. Why do you think God included this story in the Bible? Why do you think Jesus put 
this story in the Bible? Do we think that this is just another story? No, God is trying to show us something. To show us how grace works. How to face difficult people in opposition. She's had enough. She barges in and gets on her knees and kisses the feet of Jesus. And I want to tell you right now, in that culture, that was a no-no. That was a no-no. Would be humiliating. But she's a sinner. And now she's given Jesus the honor he deserved from Simon. See, it took the night walker, the street walker, to give Jesus the honor that the religious never give him. And sometimes it takes others to show us what great honor Jesus deserves. It took her to show everybody that night the honor and the respect he deserved. The Bible says even the rocks will praise him. I want to tell you this morning, we're not going to let the rocks praise Jesus. Amen. He is worthy of our praise. He is worthy of everything. He's worthy of adoration. He's worthy of everything in our lives. She has worse. She's a daughter. They don't think so, but everybody has value. The cross is for everyone. What are her tears? Tears of gratitude, tears of forgiveness, tears of joy. You think this is shocking? This is nothing to a woman letting down her hair. A woman letting down her hair in those days was grounds for divorce. She lets down her hair. Oh, she's let down her hair before, but for the wrong reason. She lets down her hair and begins to wipe Jesus' feet with oil and tears as the fragrance fills the room as a memorial to honor the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. She's desperate. It was shameful to let down your hairs. But you know what? She doesn't care. She doesn't care what people think. See, see, she isn't pretending. She's not pretending to be perfect. And that's the problem with religion and self-righteousness. It's all pretend. All the self-righteousness comes from pretending that we're not like others. When we come to Jesus, we can learn a lot from this story. When you come to Jesus, you come just as you are. She has her hair down before. And as I was studying this story, I was wondering why his feet, why not his head? It was respect. And I want to tell you, this story embarrassed everybody that was there. I love her because I love her honesty, her dedication, her heart, her commitment, her willingness to take a risk. She knows the protocol, Simon doesn't. And I thought about Simon, were you embarrassed? Simon, Jesus offers Simon grace also. And here's what Jesus said, these stunning words. Those that are forgiven much, love much. Those that are forgiven little, love little. And until we all come to the point in our life to realize how much we've been forgiven, see, everybody's been forgiven the same. It doesn't matter if you're good all your life. You're still forgiven the same. And when we come to realize how much Jesus did on the cross, for each one of us, that everybody in this parking lot this morning and beyond is equal in God's eyes, not based on color or race or ethnicity. We're created in the image of God. And how are we going to get people to Jesus if we have a, a symptom of self-righteousness and judgment? Nobody wants to come to Jesus that way. 
What is Simon's sin? Lips that won't kiss, knees that won't bend, hands that don't touch or serve, oil that isn't used, and religion that tries to control. It's the sin of the heart. It's the sin of suspicion. The sin of self-righteousness. See, Simon and this woman are the same. The difference is, she's willing to lay down her sin in front of Jesus. He's not. She needs grace for her heart that's broken. He needs grace for a heart that's hard. I want to close with a couple of things this morning. I love this. The audacity of this woman. The absolute audacity to touch Jesus. See, by touching Jesus, it makes Jesus unclean under the law. Jesus don't care either because he is the fulfillment of the law. And Jesus took her sin as she laid her sin at his feet. And I want to tell you this morning, at the cross, Jesus took all of our sin also. By the sound of your horns, how many are born again this morning? Jesus says your faith has healed you. Not the oil, not the water, not the tears, not the hair. He said this, he goes, your faith has saved you. And then he said these stunning words, go in peace. Go in peace. Stop stressing out. Quit being anxious. Quit worrying about everything. Jesus got you. You'll be all right. You're going to make it through. And when our time has come to go home and we meet Jesus face to face, we can lay everything at his feet, even the crowns that we receive. I want to read you alphabetically. I want to read you alphabetically who we are in Christ. It'll only take a minute, okay? You ready? This is who you are in Christ, according to the alphabet. Able to do all things, abounding in grace, abounding in hope. Abraham's offspring, accepted, acknowledged by need for God. Adequate, adopted, adversary of the devil. Alien and stranger in the world. Alive with Christ, ambassador for Christ. Anointed, anxious for nothing. Appointed by God, assured of reward. Assured of success in him. Baptized into Christ, beautiful. Becoming a mature person. Becoming conformed to Christ. Belonging to God, blameless at his coming. Blessed, blessed with spiritual blessing. Bold and confident, bond servant, born of God, born again, bought with a price, branch, part of the true vine, his bride, his brother, brought near, built up, buried with Christ through baptism, called, cared for with compassion, carried, child of God, cherished, chosen, Christ is my hope, Christ is my life, circumcised spiritually, citizen of heaven, clay in the potter's hand, clean, cleansed, clothed with Christ, comforted, complete in Christ, confident, confident of answers to prayer, confident he'll finish me, confident he'll never leave me, conformed to his image, more than a conqueror, continually with God, controlled by the love of Christ, created in Christ for good words, crucified with him, dead to sin, alive to God, delighted, delivered, desired, died, and my life is hidden in God, I'm his disciple, disciplined, drawn near with confidence, empowered to obey, encouraged, enlightened, enriched in everything, equipped, eternal life, having every good thing, eyes fixed on Jesus, favored, fearing God, fellow citizen with the saints, filled to the fullness of God, filled with the fruit of righteousness, filled with the fruit of the Spirit, filled with joy, filled with the knowledge of his will, finished product in progress, forgiven of my sins, formed in the, in, from the womb, fragrance of his knowledge, free, free from sin, friend of God, fruit bearer, future assured, gifted, given all things, given the Holy Spirit as a pledge, God is for me, God's gift to Christ, 
granted grace in Christ Jesus, guarded by God, guarded by God's peace, guided, healed, heir, helped by him, hidden with Christ in God, his, his handiwork, holy, holy and dearly loved, holy and blameless, honored, hope fixed, image of the glory of God, in Christ Jesus, indestructible, indwelt by Christ Jesus, indwelt by his spirit, inscribed on his palms, inscribed from his love, instrument of righteousness, joint heir with Christ, justified, kept, kept in the kingdom, knowing all good things work together, knowing whom I believe, knowing, lacking no wisdom, lavish with the riches of his grace, laying aside the old self led in Christ's triumph, life abundant, life of peace in the spirit, having light, light of the world, light a water garden, living in Christ's life, living for him, living stone, the Lord's love constantly and unconditionally, lover, made alive with Christ, made by him, having the mind of Christ, member of his body, minister of reconciliation, named, near to God, my needs are met by his riches, never forsaken, new creation, new life, new self, no condemnation, no fear, no longer children, no longer slaves to sin, not given to the spirit of fear, not my own, notice with loving concern, object of mercy, obtain an inheritance of God's household, one with him, one spirit with him, overcomer, partaker of Christ, partaker of the divine nature, partaker of grace, partaker of the promise in Christ, having peace with God, his people, perfect and complete, pilgrim and stranger, his special possession, possessor of all things, power of God behind me, pray for, pray be, prayers go up before God, predestined to adoption, prepared beforehand for glory, presented to God holy and blameless, pressing forward, priest, protected, provided for, purchased, purposeful, quali qualified to share in his inheritance, raised up with Christ, receiving mercy, received from the Spirit of God, received the unshakable kingdom, receive the riches of his grace, reconciled to God, re reconciled to God, redeemed, refined, reigned in life, rejoicing, renewed, his representative, rest provided, having revelation from God, rewarded by God, rich, righteous, righteousness of God, rooted up and built by him, royalty, royal priesthood, safe, saint, salt of the earth, sanctified, satisfied, saved, sealed by the by God with the Holy Spirit, seated in heavenly places, secure, saint, his servant set free, sharing Christ's inheritance, sharing his glory, slave of righteousness, his sheep, soldier, son of God, spirit of love, power, son and mind, stable, standing in his grace, standing firm in Christ, stand, standing strong with the Lord, Temple of the living God, thought about, transferred to the kingdom of his son, transferred to his image, treasured in truth, unafraid, understood, understand things given by God, united with Christ, unworthy, upheld, useful for his glory, valued, victorious, waiting for our Savior, walking in new life, walking worthy of God's calling, washed, sanctified, justified, wisdom, his witness, his warrior, and yielded to God. Amen. That's the alphabet. <coughs> As you leave today, may you be encouraged. May life fill you. May you go today and may you win others to Christ. And may you go with the spirit of Jesus. And may you win your world. And in the mighty name of Jesus, your faith has saved you. Go in peace. Love you.